Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Even while you are maturing spiritually, you can still enjoy yourself even in your imperfect state. I said, even while you're maturing and changing, you can enjoy your imperfect self. I said, you can enjoy your imperfect self. All right, well, let's try this one. We're going to talk about farming the happy habit. <laughs> The root desire of every human being is that they just want to be happy. I mean, truthfully, wouldn't you say that that's the truth? Abraham Lincoln said, people are about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Groucho Marx said, each morning when I open my eyes, I say to myself, I, not events, have the power to make me happy or unhappy today. I can choose which one it's going to be. Yesterday's dead, tomorrow has not arrived yet. I have just one day, that's today, and I'm going to be happy today. Amen? Now, let me tell you something. I'm not just like, I'm not really like this great morning person. Dave wakes up every morning, and I said to him this morning, I said, do you ever wake up and not feel like talking? <laughs> I mean... For 47 years, not every day, but he'll get up, oh, what a beautiful morning, oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just not, I mean, I'm not a really great morning person. So if you don't, if you don't wake up with that, which, I mean, I have one daughter who's like that. <laughs> I'm more like, Now, honestly and truly, if you are more like that, you might have a little more of an inclination to start thinking things that wouldn't be the best in the world for you to think. <laughs> and so I'm telling you, I have to make a decision pretty much every day. This is the day, and that's probably one of the first scriptures I quote when I get up. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on. You're going to be happy when you decide to be happy, not when you wait to feel like it, not when you wait till you don't, till all your circumstances dictate happiness to you, not if you wait until everybody's doing everything you want them to do or you have everything that you want to have. You're going to be happy when you make a decision that you're going to be happy. Is that right, all you beautiful ladies from Puerto Rico over there? Maybe I just ought to get on that plane and go home with them. I don't know. Yay. I've never been there. I might like it. I love it. They said, I love it. Make happiness a habit. Be so happy you drive the devil stark raving mad. He's so happy about your depression. He's thrilled about your disappointment and your discouragement. He's so thrilled when everything is down. Oh, but it begins to irritate him when you're happy, when you smile and you say, I am going to enjoy this day. Well, how do you expect me to enjoy my life, Joyce? I've got all these problems. Everybody in this room has got some problems. Everybody does. Just because you don't know what they are doesn't mean that they don't have them. And I'm telling you that happiness is a decision that we make. Well, I just don't have that kind of happy, slappy, clappy personality. I don't either. <laughs> But I decided about, probably now about 20 years ago, that I was going to be happy. You have to decide first or it's not going to happen. And, and one of my problems was, was I was not fully convinced that happiness and joy was anything that was a premium as far as God was concerned. I, I didn't, I, I don't know. I didn't even really have a revelation that God really wanted me to enjoy my life. When I was a kid and being abused by my father, I can remember getting in trouble for laughing because my dad was just a real sour puss and 
he just didn't, he was unhappy. And, you know, unhappy people can't stand to be around anybody that is happy. And then because I started being abused at such a young age, sexually by my dad, I never really got to be a child. And so here I was an adult and I didn't have a healthy child in me. So I really didn't know how to just enjoy things. All I knew anything about was survival and responsibility and work and get the job done. And I just did not know how to enjoy my life. And I kept hearing all these sermons like I'm preaching today about being happy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I thought, well, where's mine? And I started studying, really studying joy in the Bible, starting with John 10, 10. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I saw that it was the will of God that Jesus died so I could enjoy my life. And he died so you could enjoy your life. Now, that's a pretty shocking thing. Jesus died so you could enjoy your life and so I could enjoy my life. So I don't think that we're doing him justice if we just let the devil suck all the joy out of us and let our circumstances suck the joy out of us. We need to make a decision today that we are going to be happy and enjoy every single day of our life as long as we're alive. And you know what? If you wake up every day in a bad mood and you think about the negative things, it's because you got a habit of doing it. I had that habit. I got it from my dad. He was sour and everything was bad and something wrong with it and always looking for the next disaster. And I just became that same way too. And after Dave and I had been married a short period of time, he looked at me and he said, what is wrong with you? Because <laughs> he was real happy and, you know, had a positive attitude. And this was what I said to him. Well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you're not disappointed when it don't. <laughs> Honey, I've come a long way. <laughs> a long way. Thankfully, that's been 47 years ago. And, you know, it wasn't easy for me to break those habits. And I, I've had to quote that scripture a million times. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I've had to meditate on John 10, 10 a lot. But you know what? I'm really a happy person now. And I have days where I have to decide to be happy. Not every day is it a big decision. But there are days when I still have to decide, you know what? I'm not going to get off in that, been there, done that. Sometimes I'll even say to myself, I'll feel my mind going, I'm like, don't even go there. Amen. Don't even go there. I've been there. I've done that. I've been around that mountain. It's not going to do any good. Can I tell you something? If you have a problem and there's something that God leads you to do about it, then you need to do it. Amen. You just need to make a decision and do it. And if you can't do anything about it, then you need to believe that God is God and you need to go ahead and enjoy your life. I think sometimes we think if we have a problem, then it wouldn't be right to enjoy ourselves. You can't find that in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that says it's wrong for you to enjoy your life. Matter of fact, why don't you enjoy yourself more than ever? And by doing that, you'll be showing God that you really do trust him, that he's working on things, and that he's, it's not being irresponsible to enjoy your life while you have a problem. If you can do something about it, do it. But if you can't, then there's no point in letting it destroy your life. Now look, even while you are maturing spiritually, you can still enjoy yourself even in your imperfect state. Yes. Yes. I said, even while you're maturing and changing, you can enjoy your imperfect self. I said, you can enjoy your imperfect self. You can enjoy your imperfect self. <laughs> Learn to laugh at yourself a little more and stop being so intense about everything that's wrong with you all the time. <laughs> ask God to change you. The Bible says, ask and receive that your joy might be full. When we cast the care of it on God, then we can have joy. God, I want to change. I need you to change me. I can't do it without you. And I'm not going to hate myself while you're working on me. I'm not going to be mad at myself all day because I made a mistake yesterday. This is the day that you have given me, and I am going to rejoice in it and be glad. <laughs> the happy habit. How about examining your goals? Maybe you're not happy because you're just not doing the right thing with your life. I think a lot of people keep jobs they hate because they're afraid to take a step of faith to go out and try to do what they really want to do. 
Or you keep a job because it's more money. Can I tell you the truth? You'd be better off having a little less money and being happy. <laughs> Dave and I were down at our inner city church. We call it the St. Louis Dream Center. And uh, we were down there a few weeks ago. And we met the man that is running a, the food pantry down there now where it's just set up so neat. We have this food pantry. It actually looks like a, a little mini grocery store and, and the, the people in the neighborhood who, who don't have enough to get through the month or who don't have what they need to eat, they can come in there and get their little grocery cart and just shop and it gives them dignity because they don't feel just like they're getting a handout, but they can actually go in there and shop. And so we were down there and we met the man that we hired not too long ago. We weren't involved in the hiring, so we didn't even know he'd been hired, but to run this food pantry. And in talking to him, he shared something interesting. He said, I was a stockbroker for years, and I just wasn't fulfilled. So he, went, he said, I went to medical school for a year, and I still just really wasn't fulfilled. So then he said, I sold stocks privately for a while, and yeah, yeah, he said that. And then he said, I saw this ad online about running this food pantry. I've never done anything like that. But it just kind of felt like, hmm, I'm a, I think I might like that. And so he came and applied and got the job, and he said, I have never been happier in my whole life. So now here this guy was in medical school and a stockbroker, not happy, probably making more money. Now he is in the inner city in one of the worst neighborhoods in town, running a food pantry and dealing with poor and underprivileged people all day long, and he's more fulfilled than he's ever been in his whole life. I, some of you need to think about this. <laughs> if you're not happy, maybe you need to think about, well, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing in life? And, you know, you don't have to get all weird about it. You know, say, oh, my God, that's my problem. I'm not doing the right thing. But some of you already know you should be doing something else, and you just won't take the step of faith to do it. You're still back there on, on the last habit about being decisive. <laughs> I got any takers on this one? <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, that's a whole bunch. Don't be afraid to do something different. Don't be afraid to change. And don't let money rule your life. Now, look, I know you got to have money. I know you got to pay your bills. And I know that you can't just walk off from a good paying job and go do nothing. I mean, I'm not suggesting that you just go lay on the beach all the time because that's what you'd like to do. <laughs> but I do want you to be happy. How many of you are ready to be happy? <laughs> Take some time to form good relationships. Good relationships make you happy. Good relationships, a good relationship with God, a good relationship with yourself, and a good relationship with other people. You can't be a good friend to too many people, but you should have a few really good friends and then lots of acquaintances. Love everybody, but don't think that you can have a deep, intimate relationship with everybody. You just don't have the time. Now, I want you to take responsibility for your own joy. Let me read you a story. I had to get down here in the light. <laughs> Melanie is a 60-year-old woman who had been married for more than 40 years. Her husband, Don, is a history professor at a small college. Don has always loved history. And he gets tremendous satisfaction from teaching history. <laughs> now, Don is satisfied. Melanie's not. The Civil War is his passion, and in his free time, he writes books about specific battles or key individuals of the war. One day, Melanie confided in a friend that she had been unhappy for years because Don didn't make enough money to provide vacations or the nice things that she wanted or beautiful new furnishings for their house or a great wardrobe. Most of the time when Melanie complained, her friends would commiserate with her and tell her, yes, you do deserve nicer things. You know, sometimes we don't love a person like we should be loving them if all we do is agree with them and feel sorry for them. Now listen. 
But her friend this time said, Don is not responsible for your happiness, Melanie. <laughs> Don loves his work. He's not interested in becoming rich. He's 60 years old. You do the math. Don doesn't want to change anything. If you want to be happy, you'd better figure out what you can do about it because your happiness is not Don's job. <laughs> Six years later, Melanie's friend wrote to her and told her, I'm so glad that you showed me tough love. Yeah. Now, six years went by. And I'm sure the friend that maybe kind of told her off thought, well, that's probably the end of that. And she's mad at me and so on and so forth. But she said, I'm so grateful that you showed me tough love. I began to take responsibility for my happiness. My marriage has never been better. Not only that, but I've discovered that I'm a playwright and I've been writing plays and they're actually being performed in local theaters around town. Yeah. See, what happens when you're waiting for somebody else to make you happy? You never fulfill what's inside of you because God has put something in you that will make you happy if you'll begin to take responsibility for your own happiness. And I was really bad about that for a long time. It was like, well, if Dave would do this, and if Dave would do that, na -na 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 -na. and God spoke this to me before I ever had a book like this to read. Dave is not responsible for your happiness. And he sure was glad when I took that job away from him. <laughs> Come on, look at me. Nobody else is responsible for your joy. You need to decide that you're going to have joy. <laughs> How many of you need to form a happy habit? Okay, praise the Lord. Let's see what habits we got left. How many have I done? You need to laugh more and think less. <laughs> Laughter is an instant vacation. Amen. Now, last thing I want to talk to you about today is the habit of faith. You say the habit of faith, I want to tell you something. Believing, just simply deciding that you're going to believe God, that you're going to believe his word, that you're going to believe that he loves you, believe that he's taken care of you, just deciding to believe does such amazing things in your soul. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, those who have believed do enter the rest of God. And there's a lot of things the Bible tells us not to strive over, but it does tell us to strive to enter the rest of God. So that means in every situation that I'm in, the best way that I can get relief from worry or anxiety or fear or tension or stress or anything else is just to believe. I had to learn to do that even when I'm preaching. Sometimes I'd be preaching and somebody would be fidgeting around, looking at their watch, yawning. Two or three people would get up and leave. And all of a sudden, I'd start thinking, oh, this message must be terrible. They don't like my preaching. And I mean, I would just start going down the drain. And God began to show me, if you don't maintain your confidence when you're in that pulpit, you're going to give the meeting to the devil. You have to be confident. And you can't wait to feel confident. You have to be confident. We're going to talk more about that on Saturday morning, about the, ha the confident habit. But you go, the Bible says in Romans 1.17, that in the Word, in the, in the Gospel, there's a righteousness revealed that leads us from faith to faith to faith. If you guys have it, can you put up Romans 1.17 for us so everybody can see this? In the Gospel, there's a righteousness revealed for in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. I love that. So in the Bible, there's a righteousness, a right standing with God that's revealed. Now, if you don't know that right standing with God, you're not going to be, not going to be able to have this kind of faith because you're going to think that everything in your life is dependent on you, but it's not. It's all dependent on the grace of God coming to you, and you receive that grace through faith. If you've sinned, you don't have to do something to pay back now for your sin. What you need to do is say, I believe that God will forgive me if I ask him. I receive that forgiveness. There's no condemnation because the Bible says there's no condemnation. God still loves me. I'm still right with God. And that enables you to just have faith that everything's going to work out right in your life. You say, well, what happens if I believe, let, let's just say, 
I believe for something and I just don't get it. Well, then keep believing anyway. Just keep believing. Just say, I'm not going to stop believing. I may not get it the way that I want it. I may not get it the way that I thought it was going to be, but I'm going to keep believing. I don't have to believe for something. I need to believe in somebody. There's a difference. We've always got this thing that we're believing for. Well, you know what? There's a faith that's so much greater than believing for something, and it's a faith that believes in someone, and especially when you don't get the thing that you're expecting to get. Come on, we need to understand that God is smarter than we are, and He knows better than we do what we need. And thank God that He won't give us what we want, but He'll make us wait until we're smart enough to receive what He says is going to be the best for us. When you, when you trust God, listen, I ask God for all kinds of stuff. And a lot of my prayers are answered right away. Some of them aren't. Some of the things I've asked for, I've never gotten. And I've seen other people get them. And I, I just have to trust God. If that's what I was supposed to have, then you would have given it to me. Don't look at other people and be jealous. Don't look at other people and be envious. Just say to yourself, God loves me. I am in right standing with God. That righteousness has been revealed to me through the Word. God would never hold out on me because I'm the apple of His eye. He has His eye on me all the time. And He would not hold out on me. He would not keep any blessing from me. Maybe you don't understand what God's doing right now. There was a lot of things I did not understand what God was doing, but I look back now and I understand it. Sadly, we live life forward, but we understand it backward. You know, when we're going towards things, we're like, what is going on? I don't understand. This makes no sense. This is so hard. And then you get over here and it's like, oh my gosh. If I wouldn't have gone through that, I would not be the person that I am today. If I wouldn't have gone through that, I would not know what I know today. So here's the thing that we got to do. While we're over here living life forward, we say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I don't care how I feel, I believe, I don't care what it looks like, I believe, I trust that God is taking care of me. I know that I am God's child and I am going to live from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith, and faith is going to become a habit in my life. And you know what happens when you have the faith habit? Then the fear habit cannot get in. The worry habit cannot get in. The anxiety habit cannot get in. The stress habit cannot get in. You know why? Because you've entered the rest of God. And you frankly don't care what God does or when He does it because you know that His timing will be perfect and whatever He does will be 100% right. Come on, give God praise. From faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. Come on, let's all stand up. So what do we talk about today? Thoughts and words habits? The de decisive habits, being decisive? I don't want you to forget. Healthy habits? How many of you are ready to make a commitment to take better care of yourself? Now look, count the cost. Because I'm going to pray for you on that area before we leave today. Because that's so important that you start valuing yourself enough to take care of yourself. <laughs> You're welcome, daughter. <laughs> the happy habit. Woohoo! <laughs> and the faith habit. From faith to faith to faith to faith. Oh, ho, ho. Now, tonight we only have three habits, so I get to stretch them out more, and then five tomorrow morning, then our conference will be over. But you'll have 14 new behaviors that will be life-changing to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that every person here would have the wisdom to value themselves, to see how important they are to your plan, God. They may see themselves as unimportant, but they are not unimportant. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. You have not made any junk, nor have you made any unnecessary things. And you need us. You want to work through us. We represent you. 
And so I pray, God, that you would give every person here the wisdom to start taking care of themselves. And I pray that you would lead them and bring conviction in areas that need to change. And I know that if they'll step out in faith, the grace will be there to meet them to do whatever they need to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh. So I just want to encourage you that while you're farming new habits, it's important for you to stay positive and think about the good thing that you're trying to do instead of thinking about the bad habit that you're trying to break. We always have a tendency to focus on, I need to break this habit, I need to break this habit. But really what we should do is focus on the good thing that God is working in us. Be thankful, God, I thank you that you're working in me. Thank you that you're working this good thing in me and the good will force out the bad. Nancy is two years old, but when she was about three months old, something fell on her head and, and the injury basically stunted all of her development and her growth from that point forward. And so she hasn't really been able to, to develop like a normal child since that time. But because of our medical clinics here, she's come back the last two days and they've been able to, to get her the medicines that she needs. They've been able to teach the family how to work with uh, Nancy on, on physical therapy and how to, to, to teach her and train her so that there's a very, very good chance that with these medicines and with you know, the physical therapy that she'll walk someday and that she'll be able to overcome this injury. Nancy's parents have brought her two days in a row because they love her so much and they want her to get the help she needs. On their behalf, as a parent, we just thank you that we can come and help beautiful children like Nancy. Hi, sweetie. You are a beautiful girl. Yes, you are.